Hello everybody! Welcome. It is Tuesday night, at least where I am, and this is To Write and Have Written, and I'm Laura Van Arn Dog Paw. Let's do fun stuff. Okay. And I'm going to turn off our rain here. <laughs> I thought a little spooky forest would be a good place to hang out because we're doing a very scary topic tonight, which is thunder, thunder, lightning, lightning, query letters. So I'm going to talk about those and how to set those up. Uh, so they're not quite as scary. So, all right. And I'm going to grab my notes and I have a few questions. So based on a conversation I was having a few days ago about th this is kind of a weird um, hybrid product because the, the primary uh, interaction, I guess, interaction, because it is interactive, uh, is I stream and I have a talking head that exposits <laughs> and then there is a chat that can ask questions and I really like as much as possible for it to be interactive and back and forth and be a discussion so I can respond to questions in real time and all of that sort of thing. Then I take that video and I put it onto YouTube for replay so for people who can't make the stream or for people who find a topic later or anything like that. But then I also pull the audio and that becomes a podcast. So this is actually one stream thing that is going into three different places uh, and forms, really. You know, live video, pre-recorded video, and pre-recorded audio. So the question is, um, there are hugely different preferences uh, for different formats and uh, and, and different, different things within those formats. And what I am hearing is that this may be too long for a podcast and too short for a stream. So I am opening uh, the comment box, as it were, uh, for people to tell me what they think. Hey, Kyle, I see you in the chat. Welcome. So, um, so if you are listening to this on a podcast and you're like, yeah, I would much rather this be 10 minutes long. That sounds great. Just give me 10 minutes and then I can get on with my life. That would be good for me to know. And if you're listening uh, to this live right now, <laughs> or if you're catching it on YouTube or something and you're like, yeah, this is, uh, this is a, uh, pretty, pretty, pretty solid for a YouTube recap, but I would like it to be a little bit shorter, you know, maybe in the 10 to 12 minute category, or if you are listening to this, uh, right now on a stream, Oh, Sable! Sable is raiding! Hey! Thank you so much. Welcome, raiders. Um, <laughs> so raiders, you're just in time to have an opinion. <laughs> uh, so I, um, because it, my streams typically run about an hour because that gives us a, a, a good episode length for a topic that people can count, can count on, but uh, many writing streams run much longer. So I'm just really curious uh, how people feel like that. Okay, oh my gosh, we have so many raiders <laughs> and we are being boarded by so many people. Um, oh yeah, oh, and Chris, yes, I think this is your first live, live Lara stream. Welcome, welcome. So uh, yeah, oh, hey raiders, come on in, grab some hot cocoa and pull up a chair. Uh, so yeah, um, so quick, quick recap, uh, since I was mm, two thirds of the way through my through my uh, question, I guess, when people came in. <laughs> You'll never take me alive. Okay, Kyle has set up at the at the forecastle with a uh, with a machete and a hook and is just laying waste all around the decks. Okay, this is fantastic. All right, <laughs> all right. Um, so above and through the carnage uh, that is that is happening here uh, as we are raided, it's fantastic. Um, so my question was, uh, I have I have this weekly stream that runs through various uh, topics on, you know, both the profession, well, well largely specifically, it's, it's honestly, it's just about the business of business side of creativity. So um, it has several different themes, but honestly, that's really the bulk of it. Um, and <laughs> defending, oh my gosh. Um, so what, uh, so my question is, since this is showing up on multiple different platforms um, and it may be suited for more than some than others, I'm just asking for feedback. Are people happy with the one hour format? Do you want to hit smaller topics in 10 minute bursts? Do you want a six hour writing stream? 
talk to me what you tell me what you want and um, and if this is your first time here because you just rolled up with this rollicking band of scallywags that are boarding us right now um, then welcome hang out grab your favorite snack and uh, you can develop an opinion as it comes to you so okay all right. <laughs> Grace is in the future. Yes. Uh, yes. Grace is living in the land of tomorrow. So pirates cannot reach Grace. Okay. All right. So tonight's topic, again, we're doing something very scary because it's uh, the spooky season. So we're going to tackle scary things. And that is query letters, thunder, lightning, thunder, lightning. So, uh, yeah, so I'm going to uh, walk through how I do a query letter uh, and show you query letters that have worked and help you to build your own. I, honestly, guys, I just keep a form letter and then I update it so you can do the same thing. So um, did I want to do something else before we got started? I don't remember. Yes, yes, I do. Yes, I do. I have a raffle this week. <laughs> like, why, why do I have this nagging feeling that I haven't done a thing? Because I haven't done the thing. Uh, yes, uh, last week I had a raffle to give away a book, and this week we have a raffle to give away a book. And last week's book was paperback, so it was limited, I'm so sorry, to the United States because I've been having the worst problems with international shipping, and that was before the USPS just decided they weren't shipping to a couple dozen countries anymore. So uh, this week's raffle is in fact for an ebook, so it can go anywhere on the planet, um, I don't know if you're watching this from the space station, I can probably get it to you there too. Uh, so, um, that would be great. If you're watching this from the space station, space station, please say so. Uh, I really want to know, but let me just go ahead and open that raffle and I'll prize what? Yes. Yes, we did. We did that. Hold on. Why are you telling me you can't raffle? Oh no, don't do this. Please hold. Let me find out why it is not allowing me to start the raffle. Yes, please say it's done. It's done. Okay. Do the thing. Ha ha! Okay, I hope this works. <laughs> I'm going to spaceport on Mars. Um, yeah, I knew somebody in the Mars 100, if you guys remember when that was going on. So, okay. Has the raffle begun? The raffle has begun. All right. Ta-da. All right. We are giving away a copy of The Windward King, which is a novel by Katie Ivanrest, who is here in the chat. So, Kate, you may wave at everybody and feast your eyes on this lovely cover. That is what we're giving away tonight. So everybody can jump in that raffle. Subscribers do get more tickets. Hint, hint. If you are uh, if you are an Amazon Prime, you do get a free subscription, and I would love if you would donate that this way. Uh, and if not, you're welcome to still hang out. You just get one ticket. So do that. Do I deliver to Valhalla? Absolutely. I have a special. Um, you know the squirrel that runs up and down Yggdrasil, and oh my gosh, what is his name? Uh, tot, 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 because then it's got the word tooth in it. Um, Tusk. Oh my gosh, I'm losing all of my geek cred points. Anyway, yes, we can totally get to Valhalla. I've got the squirrel who, uh, we've got an arrangement. We can make it happen. All right. Um, yes, Grace, this is international because this is an ebook and I can get it anywhere. So please jump on in. Ebooks can travel all over because I am not relying on the USPS to get them there. So uh, that raffle will be open for the next half hour. So go ahead and jump on in. Ta -da! And I'm going to go ahead and take that cover down. And that's where we're going. And now back to our topic this evening. Shara will be delivering it in person, Kate says. That's even better than the squirrel that lives on Yggdrasil. Um, okay, so. All right. Let's go with, uh, let's go with query letters. So I'm going to jump over. Yes. Yes. Thank you. DM stretch. Uh, rat, rat, ratatosker, rat, uh, ratatosker. Yes. Which is tusk is related to what became tusk and it's some pun about teeth and I don't remember the details, but thank you. That is the squirrel that I was remembering. So, okay. Awesome. <laughs> God, I've got people to have my back here to keep me from being completely ignorant. Let's jump over to 
where I used to have, that's great. Before we went live, there was a, there was a, a Word doc here. Yeah, give me just a moment. Hey, Word doc, thanks. Okay, I don't know why it wanted to be like that, but it did. All right. So uh, again, we are gonna walk through query letters and I'm just going to walk you through. This is not all original to me. This is a lot of really great advice that I have taken and processed into uh, what I'm gonna call a system. It's a system I'm like, not, like I said, I just have a form letter <laughs> that I just keep updating and that just streamlines the whole process. Because honestly, writing the story is frequently easier than selling the story. So let's, let's take some of the fear and pain out of this. All right, so to start, your query letter need have only three paragraphs and those paragraphs can be very, very short. So I'm going to pull out, this is an actual query letter that I managed to still have in my files. Um, a lot of the queries that I send out now are actually being submitted through uh, submittable or um, oh my gosh, is, is the other one called Matroska? I think that's Russian dolls, but it may also be the sub submission site. But anyway, they're using um, uh, online forms to submit uh, the stories and you know, manuscripts and query letters and everything all together. Uh, so if I'm writing query letters and I'm submitting them directly into the form, I don't always keep a copy of what I sent, but um, I did go back through my files and I found a query letter that I still had. I actually found several, but I'm using, I'm using this particular one. Um, so I'm going to start here with, oh, uh, come on, work for me. There we go. So this is my opening paragraph. And in this particular case, um, this is the entire paragraph. It, it might be longer in some cases, but honestly, this is enough to get started. What I'm going to do in this opening paragraph is hit the title of the story, the length of the story, and the, job, the genre, please make words the genre and the subgenre of the story. Uh, in this case, historical fantasy, I didn't get any uh, more uh, subgenre than that, but historical fantasy is already a subgenre of fantasy. Uh, and then if there's anything specific to the theme or publication. So in this particular case, I was submitting to an anthology that was about odd professions. So I could have mentioned here that the story is about, is about an omyoji, I didn't in the first sentence because not everyone in the United States knows what an omyoji is. Why would they? <laughs> so um, for those of you watching at this time, it is uh, a Japanese, uh, I'm, I'm going to hugely shorthand for the, for the sake of space and time and, um, and just say it's uh, kind of a shamanistic uh, priest role and that's really a terrible explanation, and please don't quote me on that, but I'm just being really simple. It's a person who practices omyodo, and the fastest way to refer reference that for American audiences is omyodo and feng shui are cousins, you know, uh, of the same practice. So, okay. Anyway, um, so I could say this was a, a story about a person practicing this very specific pr profession, uh, submitting it to an anthology of, you know, unusual pr professions. Uh, so, if, if I can get away with that in one sentence, I do. Short is good. In query letters, short is very, very good. Uh, if you remember when we had Rhonda Parrish on um, previously to talk of things here, and she was talking about getting hundreds of applications or hundreds of submissions for a single anthology. There was an anthology I submitted to uh, not that long ago that got 1,500 submissions for, a, for an anthology that had 20 spaces in it. Um, don't, don't make people spend time on things. They're looking to get through stuff as fast as possible. If you make editors have to concentrate really hard to, to figure out or to sort, uh, they're just going to pass because they've got hundreds of more stories to get through. All right. So this next, so that was, that was the easy thing. That's honestly the fastest and easiest way to go. The next paragraph is uh, one where it starts to get a little bit of fun. And this is also where it can get a little bit scary. So work with me here. Let me paste this in here. All right, so the second paragraph is, why am I the best person to write this story? And I've got a really easy one. This is why I picked this example uh, to, to start with here, uh, because it's really easy. 
I'm frequently giving uh, seminars or presentations on Japanese folklore and yokai, so uh, I'm a person who's fairly conversant with this topic. I've already written stories, um, not only about, you know, set in the setting and about these themes, but with these characters, uh, which I can kind of hint at a little bit here. So, hey, by the way, by the way, I've got some built-in readership, okay? I've got people who are already reading these who are gonna also be interested in this story. So this is a uh, really, really, we'll, we'll talk about what to do if you don't have these, uh, these uh, advantages here. But this is, a, I'm using this because I want you to be thinking in these, in these, along these lines. Why do you want me to write this story? Why, was, why did I write the best story uh, for this? And uh, you can also say, hey, I have written this story set in the Spanish Reconquista. I spent a year living in the south of Spain and studying Spanish history. Uh, so this is a, you know, this is, this is why I, I wrote this story that I found, you know, this era and setting so fascinating. And, and that's in another query letter <laughs> that I wrote. So you can get um, those things. Uh, yeah, so just think about the second paragraph is what makes you a good choice for this story? Why do they want to see the story that you wrote specifically? And we'll come back and spend some more time on this too. And by the way, um, just, just a reminder, jump in and ask questions at any time because I am totally just gonna happily talk to myself um, about these things. And if anybody wants to, uh, to interrupt me, that is great. And I have too many, too many windows open. I'm so sorry. Um, great question, Kyle. So historical means that it is set in history and it is specifically historical means that it is set in our history. Uh, and, and I'm sorry if, if, if it's not coming through on the screen. Um, Kyle asks, does historical mean that it's historically accurate? Uh, so if I am writing a story, like the Song Weaver's Vow uh, begins in our own historical timeline uh, with a group of merchants on their way back from Byzantium and they run into some Viking raiders. Everything that's in that is historically accurate. And I'm going to have researched that and made it as, you know, as near as possible to, to history. As soon as that history starts changing, so maybe, uh, maybe the Axis powers won World War II or something like that. That leaves off being historical fiction and that starts becoming alternate history or something like that. Uh, so yeah, historical is set in our own timeline. Historical fantasy is set in our own timeline, but with fantastic elements. So maybe the Vikings have magic or, you know, something like that. <laughs> you had me a Viking. Yeah, um, that's, uh, yeah, see, this, that, that book is actually why I knew Ratatoskar existed. I just couldn't remember his name, but I knew that there was a squirrel that ran up and down. Okay, so first paragraph what is it that I have? What is the story that I'm offering you? Second paragraph, this story, uh, I, I was a good person, to, or I was a good choice to write this story uh, because of these professions, hobbies, or interests, or whatever uh, that would be on that. Um, and that doesn't, again, I'm going to back myself up a little bit. In this case that I'm showing you, this particular one, I regularly give talks on uh, uh, yokai and, and such. So, uh, so I'm a great person to talk about this. This can also be as simple as I have always loved, you know, the, the stories of the French resistance. And that is something that I've spent a lot of time, uh, reading about and learning about. And so I have written my story set with the French resistance. Okay. You know, it doesn't have to be, oh, I have a doctorate in this. Just tell them that you're a nerd. Okay? What they want is something that you are going to have uh, brought to this. And, and again, if your story, this, this, the examples that I'm using here with historical or something are making it, uh, you, those tie-ins a little bit easier. This can also work. You know, I'm writing a contemporary romance. It includes um, totally making stuff up here. A, uh, a kindergarten teacher and a scuba instructor. And I really enjoyed writing this story because I spent four months as a scuba instructor in some place where people scuba dive. Okay. So, um, that, uh, Cancun is Cancun a scuba destination. I don't, I don't dive. So, uh, I'm not the best person to ask, but you can see where I'm going here. All you're doing is su suggesting this is something I'm enthusiastic and knowledgeable about. 
Okay. <laughs> yes. Okay. All right. All right. All right. So paragraph one, what is the story I am offering? Paragraph two, why was I a good choice to write this story? Paragraph three is now we are getting into credentials. So let me copy and paste right here. Coming in any moment now. There we go. So this one is where it gets a little tricky and I keep making jokes about this, but it keeps being accurate. I'm from the Midwest. We are not allowed to talk about ourselves. We are definitely not allowed to toot our own horns. So this is where you get to A, write it about somebody else or get somebody else to write it about you and then just keep it on file and paste it into your query letters. I do update this regularly. Uh, the one that I am showing you here is from an older query letter. So you're going to see older dates on it. Uh, but these are things that, uh, that I'm going to pull out. And I'm going to show you one where I have a lot of street cred, and then we'll talk about what to do if you don't have a lot of publication credits or awards in your history. So this one, um, I'm able to lead off pretty strongly here. I can say, you know, look, I have seven stories happening in these two years uh, that are in commercial anthologies. So this is not like I'm just throwing my story out on the internet and calling it published or, you know, paying somebody to publish it or something like that. Um, I'm telling people I have reviews from industry publications. This is where I would mention Publis Publishers Weekly or Kirkus or Tangent or something like that. Um, and I mentioned a few, uh, in this case, nominations um, on, and other ones I will mention specific awards. Uh, it really depends on when and when I'm talking about and you know where I'm submitting. Uh, so lots of things can count here. Um, and I'm sorry, let me go have a drink. I actually traveled this past weekend. I was out at uh, Rocky Mountain Fiction Writers Conference, which went really well. Um, but I spent all day on an airplane for the first time in forever, and I'm still rehydrating. <laughs> Oops, excuse me. All right. So backing up. This is where uh, you want to focus on how do I want to say this? You want to look like you're serious about your writing career. This does not mean that you have to have been a bestseller. This does not mean that you have to have sold X thousand copies or have so many thousand followers on Twitter or all of those things. And we've talked before here about uh, vanity metrics and you know that the number of followers I have on Twitter doesn't matter and those kinds of things. But um, we'll, we'll, we'll rot rotate around to that. What I want to do is just mention anything that says, yes, I'm taking my uh, my career seriously, and I'm, I'm working at it. So if you have publication credits, um, I have been previously published here. Anything that's a, you know, legitimate publication is going to count. It does not matter if it is the exact same genre. So if you're, I'm selling you a historical fiction, um, last year I sold a contemporary romance, go ahead and list that, you know, the, uh, the historical fiction magazine, or anthology um, isn't going to care as much about the contemporary romance, but they care that your writing was good enough to get published. Okay, so that's that's really all you're after here. If you have industry reviews, and I don't mean here, you know, copy what that one person said on Goodreads or Amazon or something. I mean, if you have uh, something from an industry industry publication like Publishers Weekly or Kirkus or whatever, uh, if you don't have that. Don't worry, <laughs> it's no big deal. I'm just listing off possibilities. You definitely don't have to have that in your query letter. Your query letter can actually be quite lean. And we'll talk about that uh, in a little bit. Uh, and then of course, if you have awards, if you have one contest or whatever, now is positively the time to flaunt them, okay? So again, anything that's a legitimate uh, award or nominations are also good. Uh, contests, all of that, feel free to, to mention those. The caution here is that um, I, you don't want to artificially inflate this, okay? Uh, the, first of all, editors receive a lot of query letters and their BS meter is pretty decent, uh, but also just, just don't be that person. <laughs> so I heard somebody uh, explaining once what, uh, what they did on their query letter, which is they had entered a contest. It was a contest with, um, it was a very small, very local contest with no prerequisites for entry, which is all fine. Uh, and they had entered their story and they had not won. But what they had, they said was, oh, 
because the because my technically my story was entered in this contest, they included in their query letter uh, was under consideration for the X award, and I'm like, ah, oh, that's that's a little skeezy actually. Like, there are absolutely contests where you can self nominate, and I'm fine with that. That's not the problem. The problem is that you heavily implied that your story was much further along in the judging process than it actually was. And, um, and it just, yeah, inflating things does not, uh, it's not worth it. Just, just it's not worth it. Just list your legitimate credits. Um, and if you have, if this is your first query letter or you have never sold something before or anything like that, fine, just put more stuff in paragraph two and skip paragraph three. Totally, totally legit. Uh, you know, again, this is this is just a system that I'm using. Um, it's not the you. <laughs> the editors are not receiving this with a checklist. <laughs> They're going to make sure. Oh no, oh no, she only listed three awards. We're not we're not considering this story. That's not how it works. Okay. An important note: um, if you are submitting through a form like at Submittable or the others that are out there. Uh, Keep in mind that, um, oh, okay, I'm sorry, I'm going to interrupt myself because I just saw Kate in the chat. I think my first query letter was the first paragraph. Thank you for, for your consideration and nothing else. Yeah, that is completely legit, okay? It is better to be short and simple than it is to be long and kind of hyperbolic and less than accurate. <laughs> okay. Just, just get in there, get it again. They're trying to get through things as quickly as possible. Exactly. So yeah. In case the story got accepted. Yeah. Because ultimately I, I'm, I was going to hit this later, but let's do it now. Ultimately it is not about my query letter was amazing. It was about my query letter, got them to look at the story and my story was amazing. Okay. Yes. Um, hellish mist. Uh, welcome. We are talking about submitting query letters. Uh, when we're selling our fiction. So that's, that's welcome. That's how we're doing this. Okay. Um, backing up, where am I? Da -dum -bum -bum. I have no idea. Oh, yes, when we're doing forms. Uh, when we are submitting forms, uh, one, one reason that a lot of places have gone to the online submission uh, forms and, and the, the the third party processes there is that they can get what we call blind submissions, which is my story and my query letter are going to come in without my name visible. And this is great because uh, <laughs> I saw, oh my gosh, I'm going to do this um, vaguely and nicely, uh, probably more so than it deserves. But um, I saw a long and tedious uh, dissertation on how publishing was all anti-men and men couldn't get published. And, you know, the, this person had cherry picked uh, a very few uh, publications and pointed out that there were more female writers than male writers represented over this period of time that was arbitrarily determined for each publication and all of that. Anyway, um, so therefore, you know, blah, blah, blah. And uh, so obviously the editors were only selecting female writers and everybody knew that couldn't be the, uh, because they liked the stories better because women can't write better than men. And oh my gosh, it was a thing anyway. And my response to that was, okay, but three of the five publications that you cherry picked for your very cherry picked dissertation, um, use blind submissions, which means the editors do not know until they select and make offers on the stories who wrote them. And they, they don't have names to guess genders from or, or anything like that. So it takes out you know, so much of the, uh, you know, we're not, we're, we don't know gender, we don't know ethnicity, all of those kinds of things. You've just got a story and a query letter. So if that's the case, if you're submitting through one of those forms, make sure that you're not including your name or, or things in there in their query letter, because that's one of the things that um, is keeping that a blind submission. Um, so you'll have a separate space for your name, and then you'll have your space for your query letter, and then they'll be able to see things, um, see your name after they make a judgment on the story. Okay. Um, thank you, Grace, for, uh, coming, uh, <laughs> coming up and, and catching, offering extra info in the, in the, in the chat. I'm sorry. I can almost make words. It's like, like I make words for professional. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, yes. So it is, uh, I'm going to recap what Grace said. It's a cover letter. When you apply for a job, in this case, the job is selling the short story, um, or a novel, uh, manuscript or such. Um, so that is a, 
uh, a great recap, Grace, and thanks for doing that. Okay, so other other things to keep in mind if you uh, if you are writing a an actual cover letter, meaning you are writing it and then including it with your manuscript in an email, or <laughs> I remember the days when we did this physically with paper, um, but then. Uh, Please, one of the things that I've heard multiple editors say uh, is that uh, that is an immediate turn off, not necessarily like this will not tank your story from the beginning, but it's definitely going to make the hill steeper to climb is uh, that they you don't get the editor's name right. You know, let's say that you're submitting to multiple places. And so you just kind of make one letter and send it out and didn't realize that you forgot to change the name on each one of the letters before you go. Don't do that. Um, likewise, uh, if you say, dear Mr. or dear Ms., please make sure those match <laughs> where you're actually sending it. Um, you know, dear Mr. Linda Smith, please consider my story. Linda maybe, you know, kind of kind of knows that you didn't take her seriously and, and select her, your story specifically for her publication, right? So don't do that. Also, um, way back in the day, this used to be recommended. I don't think it was actually such a great idea back then, but it's definitely not a great idea now, but you will still occasionally see out there on the internet, somebody quoting submission guidelines from 40 years ago and saying to include your social security number and things. Um, so for the non-Americans, translate that into whatever your uh, your own federal ID is, uh, tax ID. But um, for Americans, that is our tax and financial ID numbers. And um, a lot of people did use to put those in their query letters. Don't do that anymore. One, it prevents it from being a blind submission. Two, identity theft is an issue and we don't need that floating around on the internet. And uh, if any, the, the idea was that uh, publishers would need it to pay you and file your taxes accurately and all that. Nope, nope, don't, yeah, yeah. If that ever was the case, it is not the case now. Just keep your personal identifying information to yourself. Uh, likewise, you probably do not need to include a physical mailing address unless it is specifically requested. Um, and frequently when I um, submit for a commercial anthology, you know, part of the payment is I get physical copy uh, or copies, plural, of that publication. Um, but if that's the case, then my address gets goes to the publisher when we sign the contract. I don't need to include it in the query letter. Okay. And then definitely, absolutely make sure that your email is in there. And if you, especially if you're filling in um, an online form, when you enter your email in that box, triple check and make sure it is in fact your email and you didn't leave a letter off or something. Because if it's misspelled, then the editor has no way to get back to you and that's gonna automatically uh, disqualify your story if they can't reach you. So make sure that that works. Okay, so, sorry, gotta hydrate. Okay, um, are there any other questions happening here? Then otherwise I'm gonna jump in. So if I've got uh, my three paragraphs, what the story is, and by that I mean title, genre, and length, and it can be really, really short. Oh, uh, the other thing I'll say is if, I, I may include a single sentence, and I mean a single sentence about what the uh, plot or the hook of the story is. Um, so, oh gosh, let me think of a, of an example here because I didn't, um, I didn't, didn't plan one. Okay. Um, I'm just going to pull one out. Uh, dear sir or madam, dear Mr. Linda, <laughs> whatever. Um, please consider bait, uh, a science fantasy of I don't know, probably 12,000 words uh, about breeding killer mermaids in a private research facility. Okay, I've got breeding killer mermaids. Probably going to have some some interest there unless I'm writing, you know, to a contemporary romance magazine. Then I'll be like, what? This doesn't match at all. <laughs> but I want just enough there that, that people can go, hmm, that sounds interesting. Tell me more. Great. I'm glad you're interested. Here's a whole manuscript. Okay. So, uh, so... So that first, uh, that first par paragraph is just what it is, maybe a single sentence on, uh, on, on plot, but definitely not more than that. 
ultimately, again, the entire point of a query letter is to get them to look at your manuscript and they're going to look at your manuscript. Okay. It's not that your query letter has to be amazing or they'll never open the page, but you want them to open the page going, huh, rather than, oh gosh, another one. Okay. So again, just keep thinking about there are 600 stories above yours and below yours, and you need yours to stand out uh, because they're just trying to find a way to get through that slush pile as efficiently as possible. So second paragraph is uh, the profession, the hobbies, or the general interests that mean that you're going to have done a good job with this story. And the third paragraph is publication credits if you have them. Okay, so jump back over here. Um, and yeah, it doesn't anybody have questions or writers in the chat. Do you have comments about things that I have forgotten? Because sometimes I forget things. And while we're waiting for that, I'm going to hop over and see how our raffle is doing. Maybe. Oh, we've got one minute and 31 seconds left on that raffle. So if you have not raffled yet, please exclamation mark raffle to get in. Subscribers get more tickets, but if you are not a subscriber, just a follower, no problem. Thanks, you can still jump on in and possibly get this. And we are raffling for, we are raffling for, we are raffling for this, this. We are raffling for an ebook of The Windward King, which releases next week, I believe that is correct. Um, so, okay. Uh, yes, Hellish Mist, feel free to DM me. That is fine. Um, uh, Chris says that's pretty thorough. Can't think of anything I missed. Thank you. Awesome. Elena asks, do I want to talk about novel versus short story query letters? Honestly, they're probably, I mean, I'm, I'm going to use the same structure for them. If, a, if it's a novel, then there's going to be a lot more in that first, uh, there's going to be an extra paragraph of, of plot and premise. Uh, but the basic structure is still going to be the same. What am I selling? Why am I a good person to sell it? And then, you know, look, look, I'm serious more than just my mom likes this. Okay. So, um, but yeah, for, for a novel, there is going to be, uh, a bit of a, I would say maybe up to four sentences, woo, um, on here's the really, really basic premise and problem of the story. So, all right. Um, but yeah, it's a good point to mention. Uh, those are, it's a good point to mention that those will differ. And I was primarily talking about short stories here. Um, yeah. Um, oh, Hellish Mist, if you didn't get it, it is exclamation point raffle as in all one word. Yes. Okay, good. Other people got you. That's fantastic. Oh, and we can no longer enter the raffle. Way to squeeze in there. Okay, awesome. Let me hop over and see. Bum, 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 bum. All right. All right. Let's see where we go. Drum roll, drum roll. No way. Oh my gosh. You won two weeks in a row. That's crazy talk. Okay. <laughs> oh, um, all right. So, uh, so yeah, and just before everybody goes and finds and sewing is half the battle in the alley after school, uh, I, I think that is a subscriber ticket advantage. That's what's going on there. But that is, yeah, it, is. it pays to be a subscriber, yes. All right, you know what? You know what? This is an ebook and I can send it anywhere. Let's do two. Let's do two. I'll buy two copies. Okay, let's drum roll and and Elena, you can't win the second one. Like those are the rules. All right. Seeker. <laughs> All right. Seeker is also who is our other subscriber, by the way. <laughs> so I had two subscribers in the raffle and those two those two wins. So yeah, yeah, use those Amazon Prime subscriptions and get in there. Awesome. Okay. Okay. <laughs> yes. <laughs> subscriber power. Absolutely. All right. So I will get those, uh, those ebooks to you guys and, um, fantastic. Okay. 
And we've got roughly 10 minutes left on the general scheduled clock. And so I actually ended up a little bit early, but that's fine. So I'm happy to take questions or discuss things or just make silly faces into the camera. Probably not. I did enough interpretive dance. Um, when I was at uh, the conference this past weekend, I, I actually presented four sessions uh, at the writer's conference and I had done slide decks for all four sessions, but then I did not have a... Uh, uh, what am I trying to say? Uh, a screen, a screen and a projector for all of them. So I was promising the, you know, the people that I would do interpretive dance for the slides and yes, all of those things. Oh yeah, this would be great. Thanks uh, for, for the, uh, do we get a synopsis of Kate's Brook? Absolutely. And I actually had a window open to do that and forgot. So <laughs> thank you. Thank you. All right. <clears throat> radio voice, radio voice. He can change how he looks but not who he is. All his life, Shara has struggled to keep up with the rest of his shapeshifter clan. A poor shifter with little talent and even less confidence, he excels only at inadequacy. When his determination to prove himself rests in the results in the brutal injury of a clanmate, Shara flees his home in shame. Taking refuge in the human capital city, he resolves to become as inconsequential as possible until the Prince Regent is abducted days before his coronation and Shara is forced to take his place. Thrust into a world of controlling advisors, scheming pirates, and calculating dignitaries, Shara fumbles through his royal duties. His next mistake could spell disaster for the entire kingdom, but he may also be the only person capable of seeing beyond old prejudices to the truth of the Prince's disappearance. But if he's going to stop a war, find a Prince, and return to his life of invisibility, He'll have to rely on the one person he knows for sure he can't trust, himself. So uh, I actually have read this uh, pre-release and do recommend. So uh, there we can actually, where is, here we go. There we go. <laughs> okay, says A plus reading. Awesome, yes. So there's a link uh, to uh, the, directly to the Amazon page. Yeah, if that sounded fun. And um, so, yeah, it's it's a it's a fantasy. It's a second world fantasy with um, honestly, it's got pirates. It's got scheming court intrigue. It's got shape shifting and magic and all the stuff. And so do the thing. So, OK, uh, what else? What else? Um, where did I leave my notes? I have too many. I, I got myself a giant monitor last year, which helped a lot, but then I stack all my windows on top of each other, which is not the best use of my space. Yes, $2. Yes, right? I should have mentioned that. I should have led with this is $2, guys. Go go get it. All right. Support, uh, support your local stream chat mates. It's totally a word I just made up. All right. Okay. But thank you, Eli. Thanks for, thanks for buying into that. Yes. Yes, special pre-order price. Yes, get it early because then the price goes up. That's how we do that. Okay, um, so oh, look, next week, I should check the calendar. I think next week is our create-in. Uh, and for, if, for those of you who are just visiting now, uh, our create-in is we do once a month and we just work together on any project. Frequently it is writing, but it does not have to be. We have people work on handicrafts. We've had people working on meal prep, all sorts of things. There will be some organized sprints and uh, so you can just, you know, it's, it's, it's like, it's like writing sprints, but, but open to all forms of projecting. And so we do that once a month and that is our create in. And then, uh, then we cycle through our themes again. So, uh oh, what has happened to my screen? Please come back. Oh, <laughs> right, right with you on the big monitor, but stacked windows thing. Yeah. Usually I'm a little bit better at it than I am tonight. Tonight I chose very poorly. So, Okay. Oh, last minute nano prep. Yes. Um, so I am back on for doing NaNoWriMo this year. I was not going to do NaNoWriMo uh, for much of the year because I kept hoping, 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 really hoping and still hoping <laughs> that I was going to be in Japan for November, but that's not happening. <laughs> so, um, which actually I think Kyle, I think earlier you asked if I had been to Japan. The answer is yes. In 2019, I was in Japan and I was supposed to be back in 2020, which mm, didn't happen. And then, so that was supposed to happen in 2021, which isn't happening. And so currently rescheduled for 2022. Uh, so yeah. 
Oh, third attempt at NaNoWriMo. Yeah. Uh, well, good luck with that. So, um, yeah, we will, we will, we will welcome you to our create in if you want to do some nano prep and if not, uh, we can, um, you know, go out and do your own thing. That's totally cool too. Uh, but yeah, I was, I was going to be in, um, I was going to be in Japan. I was going to hike. So jumping way back, if you, uh, if anybody was here in 2020, when I had Susan Spann on the stream, um, and Susan, uh, writes historical mystery, uh, and set in Japan. And she also is a mountain climber. And, uh, in 2020 released her book called climb where she became, uh, I think the first person the first Western woman to do 100 Japanese mountains in a year, or I don't, I don't remember the exact statistic now. I'm going to feel really bad, but (laughs) really bad because I, I did the last one with her. I should should know this. Um, but anyway, she, uh, she was on the stream last year to talk about the release of climb and that sort of thing. But anyway, she and I were going to hike the Kumano Kodo together. And that is a, uh, thousand year old pilgrimage trail. Uh, and we were going to spend a week doing that, but mm, pandemic keeps doing things. And, um, and Japan's not really thrilled about letting Americans in because they say Americans, uh, well, they don't say because they're very polite about it, but, but the, uh, the strong subtext is the Americans are pretty bad about getting vaccinated and wearing masks and, oh, they're not even that wrong about that. So while I am vaccinated and I do wear a mask, I understand that, um, this is something you have to make on a broad, broader scale. And so that is, uh, yeah. 2022 holding on. So there we go. Um, all right. What do we got? Sorry. I got the, Oh my gosh, I'm missing all kinds of great stuff going on in the chat. Um, 15th NaNoWriMo. Oh my gosh. 16th NaNoWriMo. That is, that is impressive. I am definitely, definitely not. Does that mean, were you in on the very first or second year? Because I don't remember how far back it goes, but not much further than that. Yeah. 2004. So that is pretty good. Okay. All right. All right. Hellish Mist, I will look for your DM later. Um, so that is fine. And, um, yeah, so I started in 99. Okay. Wow. That's actually further back than I was remembering. So, um, I was not in at the beginning. (laughs) I, I have been doing nano probably 10 or 12 years. So yeah. Okay. All right. Um, Elena, are you streaming tonight? Give me that. Give me that in the chat. Yeah. Shooting a film in November. There's a little, uh, that, that, that like, like hiking on a, you know, mountain pilgrimage trail. There, there are times when you just say, "Mm, this is not, not going to be my best period, (laughs) not going to be my most productive work. Um, okay. So Elena is going to be streaming at eight, but it will be a short stream. Do you want to give us a teaser on what you're working on tonight? Elena is doing a sponsored cosplay build and is finishing up pieces uh, of, of armor. So that's what's going on there. Um, yeah. Oh, and sorry, quick recap for people uh, who missed the very, at the very beginning, uh, I was, I was saying that, uh, this to write and have written uh, thing that I do runs short for the average streaming time slot. Oh, thanks for the follow, Hellish Mist. Uh, runs short for the average streaming spot, but it runs very long for the average podcast spot. So if people on you know who are partaking of this, consuming this on various platforms, want to give me feedback on, I actually wish this was a longer stream with lots of work sessions, uh, you know, I don't think anybody wants me as a talking head for longer. <laughs> Nobody wants that. Um, or I want this uh, as a video tutorial or a podcast, but I want it in short chunks rather than you know going for an hour at a time or whatever. Give me uh, give give me feedback on that, and because I want I want this to be useful. You know, it's not fun if it's not uh, useful. Um, and oh, it's, it could go longer. This feels super short. Oh, okay, good. Well, tonight, actually, tonight was a much shorter than usual. Usual, I'm running a full hour, but query letters, we only have three paragraphs to talk about. So I didn't want to, didn't want to throw too much padding in there. Um, but yeah, usually this runs uh, approximately an hour. Um, 
oh no, <laughs> after I gave the, the promo for the, uh, for the armor, Elena is not working on the armor. Okay. Um, but, uh, some signs that you laser engraved. Oh, okay. I'm going to be curious about that. Oh, accidental injury. So terrible. Vicious dogs. I'm pretty sure that was a, a tug accident or something like that. So, okay. Um, okay. So in that case, it was a chipmunk accident. Oh no. Oh no. Yeah. So, um, yeah, I, 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 <laughs> so I'm laughing. I'm laughing in sympathy because I too have a dog who, uh, would displace things. Oh, actually what I'll do while Elena's prepping her stream before we raid, cause we're going to jump over and raid Elena when, when she's up. Um, I will tell you about my previous Doberman, uh, Levatine. So frequently you'll see, uh, Undomiel on the stream here tonight. She actually, let me see, usually she is hanging out. Where is it? Uh, right here in, in her chair, uh, supervising. Um, but tonight she, she came up and then she decided that she actually wanted to go out and chase squirrels in the yard, which is what she's doing right now. Uh, but, uh, Levatine, uh, disassembled a car because a squirrel went under the car. Um, and when I say disassembled, I mean, she tore off the bumper. There were bite marks in the fenders. Like she did some serious take apart damage on this car. Uh, so, so I'm <laughs> very empathetic to dogs who are, uh, to people with dogs who are very, uh, dedicated to getting the thing. And I strongly suspect, um, that, that the dog and the chipmunk went one way and Elena went the other. So <laughs> maybe we'll hear about it actually on the stream. Um, okay. Oh, wow. I really did end early tonight. I was okay. Yeah, I usually I, I feel like I'm pushing a little bit. Sometimes I feel like I'm pushing a little bit to get to the end. So do that. Um, so let me hop over to the calendar and give people a heads up on what's coming before. Um, okay, so as I mentioned, next week is our create-in. And then what, what our theme is actually, since we have some people, uh, some new people tonight, the first week uh, of the month is always a business theme. So that might be something on... Um, accounting or, uh, oh, well, gosh, we'll, we've had people in to talk about all kinds of things. Um, <laughs> do, do writers need insurance? You know, all, all of this kind of stuff. It's always something uh, businessy related. The second one is, second week of the month is usually something craft related. Uh, so maybe we'll talk about how to do exposition or something. Uh, the third week is a learn with me. In most cases, my ideal is to get somebody who knows more than me on a topic and bring them in. And tonight was a learn with me, but we did um, something where I knew <laughs> the topic uh, rather than asking someone to come in. And these can be any, any number of things. So, um, I've had people come in and teach, you know, hey, I know all writers are frightened of spreadsheets. <laughs> Here's how to not to be afraid of the spreadsheet. Or um, writers frequently don't know enough about cadaver dogs when they're writing about cadaver dogs. So we'll bring in a search handler to talk about cadaver dogs. Or I have a request to have someone talk about birds of prey uh, and uh, haven't haven't gotten that expert to come in yet. Last, last week we had, uh, if you remember, we had... Um, a couple of audiobook narrators talking about, you know, producing audiobooks professionally. And so that, you know, th learn with me can be anything because there's a lot that I don't know. So <laughs> that covers a lot of ground. And then the fourth week of the month is the create in, and that will always be bring whatever project you want to work on. And, you know, we'll, we'll do some, some timed sprints and some, uh, you know, just kind of general moral support and get stuff done. And then if there is a fifth Tuesday in the month, which is not every month, then that fifth Tuesday is a field trip and field trips are where we just go and do fun topics that, uh, that I want to talk about. So the last field trip we did was, um, a world building, uh, not really an exercise, but just th uh, hopefully expanding how you think of world building. So we talked about a little, a lesser known period of history in our own historical timeline, uh, when, the electric train system was huge and very influential and was how rural communities got their electricity before there were general power utilities. Uh, and then <laughs> they got shut down and, uh, you know, for economic 
reasons and all, and all sorts of stuff. But, um, but the, the massive shift in that and, you know, so how those got started and how those ended and why we don't really talk about them today. Um, and so the things that when you're working on your world building that you can, um, you know, think about all the factors and influences there. Um, I think the fact that, as I said at the time, you know, there was a, there was a huge, uh, huge outbreak of equine influenza. So suddenly a bunch of rural towns got electricity. You know, how does this tie together? It absolutely tied together. Uh, and then before that, um, I don't know, like we, we talked about, uh, murders on the Galapagos islands, you know, unsolved, unsolved murders. We talked about, um, uh, the endurance in Antarctica I and mean, all kinds of things, just, you know, fun stuff to go out and, and learn and explore and build ideas and all those sorts of things. So anyway, those are our five themes that we cycle through, um, monthly. So, okay. And sorry, too many windows. How do windows too many things. No, I don't want to save my, my window that I opened just to be able to see what I was doing. here. <laughs> All right. Um, okay. Well, guys, thank you so much for joining me. I'm just gonna work my way slowly back to, there we go. There we go. This is the, this is the actual window I wanted. I'm really better than this. I really am. Um, okay. Thank you so much for joining me here tonight. I hope the query letter talk was useful to you. If you end up using it uh, when you submit a query, absolutely feel free to let me know and uh, you know tell me if if there's something I can do to be more useful. And I do take requests for topics. Uh, so if there's something in your uh, writing career or you know getting that you're just trying to get started and or you just you know like oh my gosh do I even want to do this you know all of that um, feel free to send me a message you can DM me uh, or or find me on any of my social media and um, and I'm happy to talk about things I don't have all the answers but I can probably save you some time on making mistakes that I have already made and uh, everybody needs to save some time so oh okay great hellish mist or you're welcome anytime all right um. All right, and so I'm thinking we're gonna go ahead and get our raid started. So if you are, sorry, I'm so hard, so bad at typing and talking at the same time. One second. There we go. If I were a smart person, I'd like have all my raid commands saved somewhere. But uh, if you are new to our raids, our raid call is everything is connected because that's how we think about world building and plot and theme and character. Everything is connected. So, and we are going to hop over and raid Elena at And Sewing is Half the Battle. And that is it. And then I will catch you next week on To Write and Have Written. I remember I actually have a title. <laughs> All right. Hey guys, thank you so much. We're going to hop over and raid Elena now. Have an awesome rest of your evening, morning, midday, wherever you are. Take care.